I welcome you to the presentation of our paper entitled An OPC UA based crane model using time sensitive networking technology. My name is Franko Latowski. I'm a senior research associate at the University of Rostock. The work I present here was carried out at the Institute of Applied Microelectronics within the international ITEA research project Optimum. In recent years, information and communication technology especially has driven the various industrial domains forward with new and innovative systems and solutions. Today we find in cars various kinds of assistive technologies and this trend will move forward in the direction of e.g. autonomous drive and driverless cars. In industrial automation, robots are working cooperative and autonomously. But how is the situation in the crane and material handling domain? In this industry, especially cranes are operating. They move heavy goods in factory workshops and in harbors. Today, these cranes are operated and controlled manually. However, autonomous or semi-autonomous functions in cranes are needed to meet requirements that are related with Industry 4.0. Industrial IoT technologies like OPC OA and deterministic IP networks are potential technologies that help to realize the Industry 4.0 requirements. In our work we have modeled a crane by means of OPC OA. Based on the modeling we built a crane prototype consisting of OPC OA server and client. In this prototype a semi-autonomous come to me function was integrated. The come to me function is based on localization information that are being sent by the crane. This software prototype was also connected to a two-dimensional graphical simulation of a crane. Finally, we have evaluated OPC OA over TSN for control traffic. OPC OA is an industrial communication protocol and was developed by OPC Foundation. It is based on the principles defined by service-oriented architectures. OPC UA was initially developed based on the client-server pattern and in the meanwhile it also integrates the publish-subscribe communication. OPC UA is suitable for industrial applications that start on factory floor devices and extend to the enterprise level. In the material handling domain in which cranes are used to move goods and materials OPC UA is not used today. When using OPC on crane the remote controller that controls the movement of crane can be a client and the crane can be the server. In our work we used an over-traveling crane. The system architecture was designed on basic components and simple operations. An employee controls an over-traveling crane using a remote controller. The bridge crane is mounted on walls close to the ceiling in a workshop. It can move forward and backwards. On the bridge, a trolley is mounted. The trolley can move left and right and back. A hook is mounted on the trolley and this hook moves up and down. Various configurations are possible depending on the application with different numbers of bridges, trolleys and hook units. In our system architecture, the over traveling crane is an OPC UA server and the crane remote controller typically used to control the crane is an OPC UA client. The network connection between crane and controller is supposed to be a wired link. Since we wanted to evaluate our crane model in a TSN capable network. But could however be a wireless link. Please note that in today's crane environments this connection is mostly based on a specific automation network e.g. can. On the server side various functions are available that are initiated by the client. In the use case diagram shown on the slide the two main actors are drawn that are an employee who controls a crane and the crane which is controlled by an employee. The OPC UA client is a controller which is used by the employee. Here it has eight main functionalities including moving forward, backward, moving left, right, lifting up and down. Also there is an emergency stop function which is used in safety rated emergency cases and the come to me function which is based on an indoor positioning system. 
The OPC UA server is an embedded system that activates or deactivates actuated of the crane based on the commands that are sent from the client and data from the crane sensors. The crane sensors and actuators are directly connected to the embedded system. The stop function of the OPC UA server is activated in the case of receiving stop command from the client or alarm from the swing or position sensor of the crane itself. There are many possibilities to model a crane using the OPC UA information model. Our OPC UA model considers the concrete structure of the overhead traveling crane and its basic functions. As an alternative, a companion specification could be used, but this is not available for cranes. The overhead traveling crane consists of a bridge that moves on rails fixed to the walls, a trolley with hoisting mechanism moves along the girder bridge, with the hoist the items are lifted. Bridge, trolley and hoist have at least one drive. Additional components are swing detector, weight detector and position detector. This slide shows the top level of the crane model based on the components of the crane. The crane itself is from type base object type and it has six basic components with the hoist controller, the bridge controller and the trolley controller. Each controller have speed and state variables. The swing detector has alarm and state variables. The weight detector has a weight variable and the state variable and the position detector has position coordinates x, y, z and the state variable. To demonstrate the movement of a crane, a two-dimensional crane simulation was implemented in c -sharp based on a crane specification from the German crane company DEMARC. The swing detection sensor is optional for crane installations and the position detection sensor is not contained in the standard crane. However, we assume that an interpositioning system will be used for the crane automation to prevent collision and to implement additional semi-autonomous functions such as come to me or go to, prospectively. The screenshot of the simulation shows the movement of the crane from side view and top view. Mostly OPC OA is used to configure monitor and collect data and state information of an industrial system. To use OPC UA for a system control task, the deterministic transmission of control packets is required. This can be achieved by combining OPC UA and TSN, also known as OPC UA over TSN. We wanted to evaluate how TSN switches meet the real-time requirements when OPC UA is used. In order to do that, we have used the TTTech TSN starter kit and made both TCP and UDP measurements on the application level. Here we only present the UDP results. The test bed contains three pre-configured 100 megabits per second TSN switches and two BeagleBone blackboards. The boards are supporting the time synchronization feature based on the IEEE precision time protocol. OPC UA published subscribe applications are pre-installed on the BeagleBones. BeagleBones are used as endpoints that host the OPC UA server and the client. On this slide, the setup of our testbed is drawn. In this experiment, in addition to the UDP real-time traffic, an additional UDP best effort traffic is injected to achieve a high utilization of the network. The real-time traffic flows along the paths 1 to 5 from BeagleBone 1 to BeagleBone 2. The publisher BeagleBone 1 sends a UDP multicast packet with VLAN Tech 3 enabled every 50 milliseconds to the receiving subscriber, the BeagleBone 2. The periodic sending interval of 50 milliseconds was pre-configured by the manufacturer of the TSN starter kit. The, the three TSN switches have pre-configured rules for UDP multicast packets with VLAN Tech 3 enabled. Packets with VLAN 
Tag 3 are directly routed and forwarded by the switches deterministically. The objective of this experiment is to make sure that the real-time traffic control is always preferred in front of the best effort traffic. Therefore, the interval between two consecutive messages should be constant. Two additional PCs are generating up to 100 megabits per, per second third-party traffic. The traffic is injected at TSN switch number 1 and is drawn in this slide along the path 6 to 10. With increasing network load, we wanted to find out if this traffic obstructs the real-time control traffic, which it should not do. This slide shows how the measurements were taken. UDP multicast real-time traffic was sent from the OPC UA server to the OPC UA multicast listener, the client, with an interval of 50 milliseconds. Server, client, exchange traffic and the time points of its sending and receiving is shown in the message sequence chart. While sending the real-time traffic, more and more third-party traffic was injected. The interval on the client should always be the same and close to 50 milliseconds. Eight measurements were taken for different third-party traffic loads. This table shows that the result of each experiment is the same as expected. The time between two consecutive received messages at BeagleBone 2 was 50 milliseconds, even in the presence of 200 megabits per second third-party traffic. Each PC generates 100 megabits per second to be sure to fully utilize the links to, be, to the switches, causing the switches to drop third-party traffic and to prioritize the real-time traffic received from BeagleBone 1 in front of it. In conclusion, I want to summarize the two major results and take-home messages. Firstly, we have modeled an overhead traveling crane by means of OPC UA. Secondly, we evaluated the interplay of OPC UA-based traffic via a TSN testbed. We have shown that TSN can guarantee deterministic delivery of packets. Also, we developed clients and servers for Linux and Windows and a two-dimensional crane simulator. We are currently working with several partners from the crane and material handling industry on a companion specification for cranes. This work is headed by the German association VDMA. Thank you for listening to my presentation. If you have any question, I will be pleased to answer them.